we are back for episode nine of Journey to a Million, and we have an awesome guest on. We have on Not Joe Flacco from the Not Joe Flacco Instagram page and then the Not Joe Flacco podcast. So I guess we'll call you Not Joe Flacco. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you guys doing? We're doing, I mean, I'm doing great. Zach, how about you? I'm doing pretty great as well. That's a good, that was a good intro. I like that. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, this is the Journey to a Million. So with that, we're going to kind of journey, start with our journey, journey to a Million what? So it, it's we're a daily fantasy sports series. So we talk sleeper lines. We're bringing the sleeper squads. And then we also just talk football news as well. So Nice. Okay. That, that's Love kind it. of the, the goal. Thank you. And yeah, with that, we mentioning that we're kind of now transitioning into the off season with the Super Bowl kind of coming up and then we're in the off season. So Zach, you want to talk about what we have planned for the journey to a million series? Yeah. So pretty much we're going to try and get a guest on for the different NFL teams, just kind of go over the ideal off season, kind of a recap of last season and then maybe a preview into next year. And then obviously like kind of some possible moves they'd like their, they'd like to see their team make. And, uh, yeah, just kind of talk about that. Yeah, and Nacho Flacco has a whopping 117,000 followers on Instagram. That's awesome, man. And you post some great memes and just the podcast network and stuff. So just wanted to, you know, salute you for all your hard work you do on the Instagram and even with the podcast stuff. So keep that up. But Yeah, it's fun, it's, it's fun man. It's fun. It's, uh, uh, you know, I, I didn't ever think I'd get to this point, but – here we are. So, yeah, it's it's awesome stuff, and we really appreciate you coming on as well. But let's let's talk now with the off season. So, looking, you know, with with the season ending for the 49ers, not really how, of course, fans wanted it to end with a win short of the Super Bowl. Just overall, you know, how how would you grade the season on like let's let's go letters letter grade in system here, like an A minus. Um, the, like, it was really, really low at three and five, like very, very low. And, and 49ers Twitter was just a hellscape. It was like Mad Max Fury Road, everybody out for themselves. Um, and it was just, it was, it was just an awful place to be. I unfollowed so many of the kind of the Niner dedicated fan accounts just because it was like, I just couldn't, I didn't need the toxicity. I was just like, listen, I'm, I'm trying to I, I follow my team. I like my team. There's certain players that, you know, we want more out of or whatever, but like, I just, all the toxicity was just killing me at three and five. And on my podcast, I said, I'm looking at the schedule and at three and five, we're looking at um, Rams, Cardinals, sorry, Bears, Cardinals, Rams. And it was, I'm looking at those, I'm like, man, if we can go two and three for, through here, so beat the Bears, split with the Rams and Cardinals, the next game after that is Jaguars, then like Vikings, Falcons, Bengals, or something like that, right? Um, and I'm like, fuck, if we can just get back to Oh yeah, I'm gonna curse. By the way, I, I don't know if that's. I'm just. It's just gonna happen. So, um, I'm like, if we can just get split those games and get to four and uh, what, what would that have been? That would have been five and six. I think if we if we'd have been able to split those those three games, um, the Jaguars game would have made a six and six, and now we're five hundred, and. From there, it's like, okay, we can make the playoffs as a 500 team. So it, from that point, it worked out basically as well as anybody that's actually in their right mind could have possibly expected it to work out. Um, and so, yeah, an A-. minus. I mean, like, the whole point of this season was to not waste a prime year of Kittle and a prime year of – Bosa and well not even that it was really don't waste a prime year of Kittle and Warner let's see what Bosa is like when he comes back off the ACL um 
let's see what a full season of Debo would be like because nobody knew what fucking Debo was going to be like. I thought Ayuk was going to have the better season. Um, and, you know, it was like, it was that kind of thing. It was like, let's just, we're, we're probably a playoff team. We should be a playoff team. Let's just get to the playoffs with Jimmy. That way where it's like, you know, because another like terrible losing season and the, the fire Shanahan stuff would have just been probably a little too loud. So an A minus. That's the the going back to the, the letter grade. Definitely an A minus. I was very pleased with the season. And I'm assuming you're happy with how they went through the postseason. Obviously, me and Drew are both Packer fans, so kind of upset about that game. But did you expect them to beat the Rams in the championship game? I know a big point on your podcast is that they were like six and zero through the last six games. They haven't lost to them in a couple of years. Yeah, I I didn't honestly really expect the Niners to win any of the playoff games. Um, like it's it's just a you know there's a reason that you've the making the Super Bowl as a six seed. The last two teams to do it are have Brady and Aaron Rodgers. Like it's really hard to win three straight road games. Um, I expected I. I expected to lose close games basically at every, at every, at every level. Um, and the Cowboys just shot themselves in the foot. Um, you could say the same for green Bay. I, yeah. The, I mean, green Bay, you know, there it's like our special teams is, was shit. Like we were 24th to 25th or something in the league and you guys were dead last. And somehow that gap, proved the difference in the in the in the game um but uh you know it's like when you get to the playoffs and fuck man I'm you know I'm old enough but like this this the same thing happens every year right like if you can run the ball and you can play defense you can win some road playoff games and um that's what they did and when it came down to the NFC championship game they weren't really able to run the ball um, and, and that really was probably the difference. They just couldn't sustain, they couldn't sustain drives. So, um, anyways, it, it was a good season. I would have rather have lost to Brady and the Bucks than the Rams, just cause like I said this on my pod, I was like, the worst part about the facing the Rams was the potential to lose that mental edge aspect of the six and oh right because like the Niners had beat them down in that week 18 game beat them down in the in the week 10 game or whatever it was um and week 11 whatever it was and like you could tell watching McVay like in the game running down and celebrating with the with the Rams this is the week 18 game like, they wanted that game. They wanted to beat the Niners. Like, it didn't – they were acting – they won the division that game, even though they lost. In a loss, they lost, They won the division. And the and the the press conference for everybody, like, Jalen Ramsey looked like somebody ran over his dog. Like, there was just – they – they that was a devastating loss for them, not obviously devastating enough. Um, but I really didn't like the – what ended up happening, which was now the Rams can say, well, we won when it mattered. It's like, yeah, I just would have liked to go into next season with that edge. But, you know, now I get to root for the Bengals. So, Yeah, and they always say, you know, it, it's tough to beat a team three times in a year, and that's in any sport. And it just feels like that's kind of what, what happened with the 49ers here. But with that, guys, you want to talk now about this offseason upcoming. You know, it's an interesting one, I'd say, for the 49ers. So let's get, let's get into it here then. Uh, talking then the projected salary cap being the current tour 9.2 million. And then right now for the 49ers, uh, the, the salary commitments for 2022 is 200, 204.1 million. And then that leaves a projected space of 5.1 million. So th- there's a, a little over 5 million to work with then for the 49ers. And then uh, just talking then with, with the cap being there, do you, the movement so now? Where, wait, wait, hold on. Where, where are you getting that? Where are you getting that the, cap number from? That's per over the cap from the. It's kind of like See, projections just, as of right now. Yeah, this yeah, is. Yeah, like, 
Oh, it's, it's the projections. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, because like I'm I'm looking at the season like I I use Spot Track. Yeah. Um, for this stuff, which is super similar, everybody's working off the same thing, right? Um, and I'm looking for the Niners. It's like for 2022, they've got mm, like is this what 202? Yeah, I guess that's a, that's about the same. Yeah, and I, I also have Spot Track up as well, and we're going to talk about the free agents. So I, I use Spot Track as well. I just yeah with, with the cat. No, just, so okay, I mean, like the 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 conversation with with this is right now the Niners don't have a ton of cap room because they've got Jimmy on the cap. And when they get rid of Jimmy, they're going to have – get rid of Jimmy, maybe cut D Ford. That will free up a little bit, not not much. Um, and, uh, you know, they're going to end up probably with around 30, 35 million in cap room is kind of where where this will all shake out. That's, that's what I'm seeing here too. And that was what I was going to bring up too, like the, the likelihood of the trade, of course, with Jimmy G and then with D Ford being gone. Uh, do you think – is there a potential destination that you have in mind for Jimmy G? Where do you, where do you think he's going to end up? I think it's the Steelers. Um, I don't think that. So if you go back to the Alex Smith trade to the chiefs, the Niners as a franchise opted to put Alex out of loyalty um, with put him somewhere where he could flourish. Um you know, the the commanders have been mentioned as a destination. I don't think that Kyle would do that to Jimmy. I don't think he'd send him to, like, with all the animosity that that Kyle has for the that franchise. Like, I don't – I couldn't see him sending him there. I can't see him sending him to the Panthers with that. You know, that's just kind of – that's a clusterfuck over there. Like, you know, it's like those year-ending press conferences with, 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 with Rule were just kind of a joke. Um, like there's that's a sinking ship. Um, I would expect it's I would expect it's the Steelers. They've got the biggest need, they've got the most playoff ready team. Um what about Tampa? With uh Brady gone now? Yeah, I don't I mean like the knock on Jimmy, right, is that he doesn't let the ball fly downfield and and that's Arians' thing, right? Is calling the deep passes. So that from a from a style standpoint. I think that like maybe Jameis even makes more sense for the Bucks, um, but I think it'll be the Steelers. I think a dark horse would be the Raiders, um, and that but that would be the math there with the Raiders would be okay. McDaniel's comes in, and his thought process is okay. Maybe I can get a first or a conditional second or something. I can get some decently high pick for for Carr, and I've only got to give up, like, a third or a fourth for Jimmy. And that gap there, right, the gap in that quality of player makes up for the gap between Jimmy and, and, and Derek Carr. Like, that calculus might – I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's a, it's a long shot, dark horse type thing. Um, uh, the Broncos maybe, if they – like. Jimmy's probably going to go to wherever, whichever team loses out on Russ, Rodgers, Watson. Um, Russ, Rodgers, and Watson. Is I, is I, that's where I'd expect him to go. So, Or if the other teams, they just decide those guys are too expensive. Zach, what do you think? Uh, yeah, I think that's pretty good. Pretty good assumption. I mean, what do you think the 49ers could get for Jimmy? I saw a report saying that, like, they're kind of expecting to get a second, hopefully, otherwise a third, or like conditional second, third round or something like that. I mean, do you think that's yeah, feasible? I mean, sure. I mean, you know, I think the Carson Wentz trade actually hurts the Niners' chances here. For sure. Um, yeah. You know, it's like no teams, everybody's – NFL teams are usually more afraid of looking like idiots than not, right? So it's like they, they operate from a, from a place of fear, typically more than anything. And um, it becomes, a, hey, I can't lose the trade, right? And so 
you know, the, the Colts lost that trade. Like they ended up giving up a first round pick and got a guy who couldn't even get him or got a, get a really good roster to the playoffs. Um, and so I think that probably hurts the Niners chances to get a great conditional pick. Um, but I certainly think that it, I, it'll be conditional and, and the Niners don't really have a leg to stand on here because they drafted Trey Lance and said, well, we wouldn't have drafted Trey Lance if Jimmy could stay healthy. And, and they're, so it's going to be really hard for them to deny a conditional pick that, that, you know, is kind of based on Jimmy playing X number of games or X number of snaps, um, et cetera. So it'll be a conditional pick. It might be a pick this year and then a conditional pick the next year. Um, and, uh, but I think they'll get two picks out of it. Either, a, either, a, either a higher pick than we'd ever think they could get like a second, you know, this year, if they could get a second this year, they'd, they'd, they'd take it in a heartbeat, but I'm thinking probably like a four this year and a conditional three next year that, you know, one of those, like, if Jimmy wins MVP, then it turns into a first type of, you know, type of things like a long shot thing. But, um, it'll, it'll look something like that. So and then, then with go Jimmy on. gone and then the cap that they have, they do about like 30 million, 35 million, like you said. Um, obviously they have some big free agents like Lincoln Tomlinson, Jason Brett, uh, Jeff Wilson, Jack Quisi Tart. And then obviously there's all the other free agents. Is there anybody that, you would like to see the 49ers sign or re-sign? Yeah, I mean, I, I think they got to bring back Tomlinson uh, at guard. The The left side of the line has been a strength and the right side of the line has been a joke. And I don't think you can – I don't think you can go into, you know, this offseason with, with a quarterback making – he'll be making his third professional start in week one, you know, with a line that – just doesn't that's that uh, with a line that gets worse from this season to next so um they'll get McGlinchey back next year um who's a better pass protector than they finished the season with last year but he's not great um and then you know I think they've got to they've got to figure out the right side of the line more than anything um and that's that's got as much to do with protecting Trey Lance as it does just kind of any kind of positional thing. It's like you've got to give the young quarterback some some confidence back there. And yeah, let's let's talk about Trey Lance stepping in because that's that's what we're going to probably see next year and make his third start professionally and, and then for the full season even. So, what what do you see out of Trey Lance? Um I think he'll My initial thing with him was like, okay, we're basically getting 2018 Josh Allen. That was like my initial thing. We're going to have a bunch of, you know, he's going to run for some yards. He's going to make some crazy throws, but, you know, we're going to get a, you know, a fair amount of picks and like a 56% completion percentage. The game against the Texans, his second start, and then his first start, I was like, oh, this is 100%. I'm 100% right. I'm a genius. The game against the Texans, he did really well. Um, like almost a 70% completion, 10 yards, an attempt, two touchdowns. He did have a pick. Um, but like he what was what was interesting was the Texans played four of the five first round quarterbacks this season. So they played Trevor Lawrence. Uh, twice because of the division. Uh, Zach Wilson, Trey Lance, and Mac Jones. And Trey Lance had the best single game of any of those guys against the same defense. Um, and he had a better game than a couple other, like, more established quarterbacks did as well. So I know the Texans were garbage, but comparing apples to apples, like, Lance held up pretty well um, against both a, the other rookies, and and some some veteran quarterbacks that played the Texans this year. So, um, I, you know, I think, again, I think he'll be, you know, if he can – we're relying on Kyle Shanahan, right? And then at the end of the day, Kyle's going to scheme open enough of this stuff. Um, there's 
there's going to be more big plays than with Jimmy. Um, there's probably going to be the same number of interceptions. Um, and I expect that, you know, he pro- I mean, probably throws for about the same. He's going to have about the same number, about the same stats as Jimmy, I think, with, um, with more rushing touchdowns, obviously. Even though Jimmy, I think he can have three this year. So, like, I'm thinking, like, 25 to 30 total touchdowns um, and uh, probably about the same everything else. Because on, on, like, an efficiency thing, Jimmy's really good, like, on a yards per attempt and um, stuff like that. So it's, like, it's really – it's going to be hard for, for him to outperform Jimmy on some of those – on some of those metrics. Yeah. Um, do you think the loss of um, the offensive coordinator, do you think that affects it at all? Or do you think they'll find somebody to replace it that Trey Lance will still be comfortable? Well, they brought in Anthony Lynn. Um, which I'm, I'm cool with. I mean, Kyle Shanahan is, is that offense. And, um, you know, if he's, if he's in his, in the zone, then, you know, we're going to have a top 10 offense. If, um, if he's not, then, you know, we'll, you know, it's, it's going to come down to the offensive line and Kyle is basically where it's at. So, um, but they basically, you know, Mike McDaniel was in charge of the run game primarily uh, the last few years and um, but he wasn't calling plays this will be his the, right now is going to be the first year he's ever called plays because he's always worked with Kyle and uh, so Kyle's always been the play caller um, and they brought in Anthony Lynn as kind of like the run game coordinator slash offensive coordinator so that they could keep kind of that division of what it what seems like so they can keep that division of labor where you know, Kyle's going to call the plays. Anthony Lynn's going to design the run game, and, and we go from there. And so I think so. Do you to answer your question? They've already hired the guy. It's Anthony Lynn. Okay, so then you know, just for for you now, Nacho Flacco, ideal off season. So we talk kind of with the trade of Jimmy G. You know, Lance stepping in and then resigning. You know, getting that offensive line strength. Is there? What would your ideal offseason be? Is there like a free agent you're looking at right now who you want the 49ers to bring in? What are you looking for? No, just just get Debo, you know, get Debo an extension, get Bosa an extension, um, fix the right side of the line. I don't, you know, maybe that's Aaron Banks, the guy we drafted in the second round last year. Um, maybe it's not. I don't know. Um, you know, but everything else I think will will be fine um whether they bring back tart or not i don't know like they could really use somebody that's a little bit more of a a ball hawk there in the in the in the secondary that's not just because tart dropped that pick against the rams but um it's just kind of like him and jimmy ward aren't you know they're not guys that that go create turnovers um and uh and so, like, it had been five years since Jimmy Ward had a pick or something like that before the week 11 Rams game. He got two. Um, and they got another one against the Rams in the, in the NFC Championship game. Um, so, like, maybe a ball hawking safety, some guy that, that, can, that can go create some turnovers. But, um, you know, I really like the team. They're going to have to – they're going to lose some guys on the D-line, but they've, they've been able to replace those guys pretty, pretty easily. So – for me, it's it's right side of the line and um, and and secondary, mostly. And then, you know, so Bosa and Samuel, of course, you mentioned the two big the guys who need to have extensions, and I, I'm sure, I mean, they gotta you gotta extend those guys. Like that's that's a must. So, uh, just interesting. We'll we'll have to see what kind of money they will be receiving. But let's kind of then look into next season now, uh, looking at you know some of the opponents, and then kind of just. You're way too early prediction for next year. So, you ready? Sure. All right. So, I, I have a schedule up. Uh, just I'll read off the name, read off the opponents, and then I, I want you to throw a, a, the first record that comes to your mind. So, here oh, it is. I, I, the, Go ahead. I'm, I'm pretty – here's what I know about our schedule without knowing it off the top of my head. We've got a really brutal schedule if you just look at the logos. But – um, the hard games are all at home, 
and the easy games, the easier games are on the road. So, like, if you look at our home schedule right now, rattle off the home schedule if you can, or the home opponents. Okay, the Commanders, it says to kick off the year. And then uh, the other home ones, let me me look through. Uh, Cardinals at home. um, Rams, Seahawks. Yeah. You know, division, yeah, Saints, Bucks, Chiefs, Chargers, and then Dolphins all at home. Right. So, I mean, the Saints game looks like it got easier because they don't have Sean Payton. Um, the Bucks game looks like it got easier because they don't have Tom Brady. So, those have, since the first time I've looked at those, those have gotten easier. But, you know, I mean, they finished 10 and 7 this year. I'll say, I'll say 10 and 7 again. Like, that would be, you know, for them to be a fifth or sixth seed in the playoffs um, next year would be a huge victory, considering, you know, um, they've got a they've got a, a basically a rookie quarterback playing. Yeah, and that, that would sound, you know, that's sound great for 49ers with Trey Lance first year if he's able to make the playoffs. I think that'd be a plus, you know, for get some good experience or Trey Lance. Uh, Zach, you got anything else you want to add? I think that's all the points that I had to cover. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the Niners are a fairly easy team because they're going to be very consistent except for their swapping. They're like – all their stars are coming back. They're swapping out Jimmy for Trey Lance. I don't, I'm not expecting some massive offensive explosion due to that just because, you know, you're going from a veteran to, a, to essentially a rookie. Um, but – over the next two, three years, you'd expect the, the offense to to start developing, you know, beyond what we've seen the last couple of years. So, um, anyway, yeah, I think 10-7, 11-6. I'd be super happy with that. Yeah, that would sound good for 49er fans. And, yeah, Nacho Flacco, we appreciate you coming on. And with that, you want to shout yourself out, you know, on the Instagram, the podcast, all that good stuff? Yeah, I mean, I'm Nacho Flacco pretty much everywhere. So, um, uh, YouTube and uh, the podcast and uh, Instagram. So uh, come hang out. We have a good time. Yeah. And like I said, he's over 117,000 followers on Instagram. So yeah, he's got a big following over there. And plus with the podcast now, the podcast he's built up, it's, it's, it's some good stuff. And can you kind of tell the audience quickly, you know, about why you're not Joe Flacco? Uh, yeah. Well, um, I, I was, I'd started the YouTube page a few years ago and um my first video i put up people started like the the first like six or seven comments were all like i didn't know i didn't know joe flacco had a youtube page and um so then i started my sign on because that back then i was like stupid nfl memes i think and um and then i started signing on to all my youtube with like for the second time i'm not joe flacco for the third time i'm not joe flacco and uh, now that's the podcast. That's the IG account. And it's the brand. Else. Yeah. No, right. it's awesome. I, I love it. I love it. All right. So we'll let you go. Appreciate you coming on. And yeah, hopefully we can have you on another time. Talk some football. You're great. Great Thanks, interview. Guys. Great football mind. So, all right. Have a good day. Thanks, guys. And now to our Super Bowl preview. And now for our Super Bowl preview portion of the podcast here for Journey to a Million. So. Zach Roush and myself, we will be previewing the NFL's biggest game, not the Pro Bowl. Pro Bowl is not the NFL's biggest game. And I I know that was a last week topic, but we talked about it on Monday's episode, and we'll leave it at that. Not really an exciting game whatsoever, unless you like interceptions. That was very exciting, but... Skills challenges are definitely better than the Pro Bowl. I think that is your... Exactly. That. I think that's most sports. You know, I think that that can be the yeah. case. But uh, let's go. Let's talk Super Bowl. We got the Bengals and the Rams. We have the Rams sitting at as favorites right now. I believe it was four and a half last time I checked. But again, that doesn't really mean much. Of course, with them being arguably the home team now, because, I mean, they are the home team, with it being at SoFi Stadium where they play. And I, I'm looking forward to the game overall. This is kind of like this going into championship weekend. This was the Super Bowl. Like this is what I wanted. And Zach, I do you feel the same with that? Uh, yeah, I think so. It's kind of 
you got Joe Burrow, who's definitely a fan favorite, and then you got Matthew Stafford after all those years in Detroit. Obviously, everyone knew about his uh, struggles to win big games or win in the playoffs. And I think he kind of proved everyone wrong this year and took the Rams to the Super Bowl. And it'll be interesting to see if uh, he can get the job done against Joe Burrow. Yeah, and everyone, including uh, Jordan Lorenz, just love Joe Burrow. Absolutely, you know, are big fans of him. And I, I get it all. I get the hype. I really do, but... I don't know. At the end of the day, like I, I'm still rooting for Stafford, like you mentioned. Everything that happened in Detroit now, he's kind of proved he's he's this proven, you know, winner as of right now. It just depends, you know, if he can finish the job and get the Super Bowl part done. But what are we thinking then also like so talking now in the game, the over under right now is forty eight and a half for, you know, points scored. With us kind of being a betting show, I know Sleeper, like I said, doesn't really, we can't really do that stuff, plus we're not 21, but what do you think on the over-under for the points? I'm going to take, ooh, that's a good one. I'm going to take the over. Yeah, and just to let you know, the the unders have hit the last three years, so putting it into you know, a little bit of history yeah. there. Of course, last year, the, the over-under was 56, and that was an under with a 40-point total with a Buccaneers 31-9 win. But yeah, 48 yeah. and a half. I think this is the year of the over as well. Well, look, and Rams defense is, of course, great with you know, all those acquisitions they've made, but uh, and that Bengals defense, they're okay. They're good, right? They, they've I mean, been playing really good in the they, They've been playing. You're they're right. Mad, yeah, yeah. yeah. They've been better than they were in the regular season. So I, I still think a top I 10 just, defense, you know, maybe you could argue, but. Yeah, I'm taking the over uh, just because I think the Rams receivers outmatch the Bengals secondary. And then as I believe the Bengals can keep it close. Obviously, they have all those weapons. They have Joe Mix in the backfield. They have Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, obviously. Um, it'll be interesting to see how the Rams D-line plays, though. Because obviously we saw a couple weeks ago with the Titans getting nine sacks, and they still somehow lost. So, I mean, I think you can make the argument the Rams' defensive line is better than the Titans, possibly. I mean, I think it's definitely close, but uh, they're pretty even. So it'll be interesting to see how the Rams' D-line affects Joe Burrow in that pocket. And I think that'll definitely be the outcome of the game. It'll definitely affect the outcome of the game. For sure, I think that's a big story in this game. You know, looking at what what defense is going to step up as well. And yeah, do you think so? Now picking a team here, are you going Rams or do you think Bengals can? I guess pull up the upset. Might be a stretch to say, but um, I want the Bengals to win, um, just because I think it's an interesting story with Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase coming from LSU. Obviously, I know there's a stat going around. That they've never lost in the playoffs. They're six and zero, but I think my game pick is going to be the Rams. I think that D line is going to end up being a big factor in the end of the game, and I think the Rams will come out on top. Yeah, I'll go Rams as well. I don't really who I'm. You know, I think I'm rooting for Rams. I'm I, I just going off with this whole Stafford thing. I think Stafford. that'll kind of keep it that way. But, you know, talking then some, like, players, you know, in the game, who, who's a guy you think, who's your guy? Pick one for each team here. Who you think is going to step up, have a big game, like game of the, game of their life? Um, I think game of their life, um, we're going to go with Van Jefferson. How's my I'd pick? i say he catches, uh, catches uh, about four catches for 120 yards a touchdown. I think that'd be a pretty big game for him. Obviously he's been kind of inconsistent all year, but I think this will be his game. And the guy then for the Bengals? Um, I think uh, Uzoma. Or Uzma? That's how you say the name. Yeah, Uzma. I think coming back off the injury, I believe he's going to play, but I think kind of goes with the uh, Talk about the Rams D line. Joe Burrow's not going to have a whole lot of time, so he's going to have to get the ball out, and he'll have a lot of 
just quick passes out to Uzoma, Uzma. And uh, I think Uzma have about seven, eight catches for 80 yards, two touchdowns. Wow. There you go. And before I get my picks, I just want to mention with Sleeper, you got to make, you have to make some lines for the Super Bowl for every cryptocurrency commercial aired throughout the Super Bowl. You get $5 added if you make one, one single bet in that game. That is incredible. Up to $25. And so if they are five commercials, you get $25. And now also Sleeper announced right before we recorded this, you can now make bets with a custom dollar amount. So no more doing their set one, five, 10, 20, you know, the 50, 75, 100, whatever they were. Now you can do custom amounts. So there you go. Sleeper being better than the competition. That's what they're best at. And Yet, an, yet another reason why Sleeper is the best. Join our Sleeper squad. We have the link we'll send to you guys if you you know go on our JD Sports Pod Twitter, the Jordan Drew underscore Sports Crew Instagram, or just reach out to us anyway, and we will make sure you get that squad's link. But here now for my picks of these games, you know, for picking my Sleeper guys, no pun intended, I'll go here. Um, I'm going to start with the Bengals. I'm going Tyler Boyd. And, we, you know, they have that three-headed monster, let's say, at, you know, receivers with Higgins, Boyd, and Chase. I think, you know, I, I think Boyd might be the guy this game. I think, you know, you're not, you can't let Jamar Chase beat you, right? So if the Rams really are able to game plan around Jamar Chase, and, again, it's easier said than done. I know Jalen Ramsey wants to follow him, it sounds like. Do you think he's going to? I don't know. He's going to travel uh, with him? He could. And it, it depends, you know. He wants to, and I think he – we might see the other parts of the game. I don't know if it'll be the whole game, but I think we'll see them. Tra- I think he'll follow him around for sure at some points. But that's my pick then for the Bengals. And then, you know, the Rams. We saw Kendall Blanton step up last game. And, you know, with Higby probably being back, right? I don't know how much yeah. I don't know how much work we'll see him get in, but I really want to touch on both tight ends here. I think the tight end game. So we're gonna end up both having some tight end picks here. I will go then Tyler Higby as well. I think one of one of those two just depends on Higby's status, and we're not gonna really know yet everything. But assuming Higby's back, I'll go Higby. But yeah, and then I also I think OBJ too. But again, I think you know, OBJ people think he's still gonna put up not like that's why I can't like put him as my big game guy because I I expect him to put up some big numbers this game. So yeah, especially in the championship game, he played really well. I think he went over a hundred yards. Yeah, or he was close at least. And at, how do you think the uh, Bengals are gonna be able to slow down Cooper Cup? Look, uh, there's there's some things. I, I mean, they're not gonna do what Tampa did. They're not gonna run mid blitz, um, <laughs> and have just a safety on him. I, I think. You gotta have two guys in the area with a guy like Cup for sure. Uh, it just we'll have to see kind of what what defensive strategies are employed. But I, you know, I, I'm yeah. rooting for Cooper Cup. I, th- I think he'll have a big game, of course, and he's the leader for odds for any time touchdown. They got minus one sixty five. He is, you know, the first Ram there by a long shot, and then Mixon follows him. But I want to talk. About Zach, the running the running game for both teams here, Acres and Mixon both. You know, it it seems like it's been very pass heavy from both offenses this postseason. That's usually how it goes. But do you think we can see either one of those guys step up and have a Super Bowl game to remember? Um, I wouldn't count on it. I just the Bengals will line. Obviously, we've seen Joe Burrow get sacked and be under pressure a lot, and the Rams. Obviously, Aaron Donald, he would probably have his fair share of plays in the backfield. And he'll uh, see Joe Burrow quite a few times. But I think, obviously, if they just keep handing the ball off, it's eventually after you get one or two yards for 10 straight carries, you have to pass and you have to just kind of go away from the run game if it's not working. So, And then as far as the Rams go, um, that Bengals D-line has been a big part of how come the Bengals have played good on defense? Uh, obviously, I think it's a uh, DJ Reed or something like that. 
DJ Reader, their D tackle. He's had a great, uh, great postseason. And it's Trey Hendrickson. You got him coming off the edge. He'll probably get a sack or two. As he's had a great postseason as well. But I think the D lines for both teams are playing probably as good as they have been all season, and it'll be tough to run the ball on either side. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm with you on all those points, but I want to, yeah, touch on the lines too. Is like they're both around the 60 yard mark for a sleeper. Don't want to give an exact amount because the, these lines they shuffle, you know, for the game, they always do. So, you know, both of them are in between the 60 to 65 yard mark right now for Rushing, Mixon, and Akers. So, uh, I, I've seen a lot of people from what I've saw, they're taking unders on both, they are not confident whatsoever. Yeah. And I, I'm cool with that, but I feel like maybe the. I think one of them, I think, has a shot to go over 60 yards. You know, it, it just one run. Think it is? And that's where it gets questionable. I'll, I'm going to go mix in. And that might sound bold, you know, because everyone would think, oh, Aaron Donald. And, you know, I think I, I think that's going to be, you know, like an X factor in this game. I think Mixon running the ball. We haven't really seen him a lot. I think this is time to shine, basically. Because that Rams defense is just overall a solid, solid unit. So, you got to pass the run. You got to do one of the two. So, yeah, I think the Bengals are definitely more committed to the run too. But yeah, I can right. see Mixon having like a 17, 18 carry game for about 60, 65 yards, which yeah. in the grand scheme of things isn't great, but it'll hit the line. I mean, that's what it's about. And that's so that's really what we look at. You know, carries really matter here. So it just really depends kind of on that. You know, and relate back to basketball, more field goal attempts you get, the more points you're got more likely to score, you know. So you can't make the shots you don't take is what they say. So uh, with that, Zach, you want to touch on some of the recent, recent coaching hires? Um, yeah, I think the Saints promoted uh, Dennis Allen from defensive coordinator to head coach. I think that's uh, – I like that move. Keep from someone from within that the players know. Obviously, the defense is a strong point in the Saints, so keep him around. Keep defensive players happy. So I'm assuming their scheme list is the same. And then the Dolphins hired uh, Mike McDaniels from the 49ers. Um, I guess I don't really know much about him. He's the offensive coordinator. But I dug into that guy kind of um, looking like in, you know, detail with Mike McDaniel. It's not your, you know, conventional um, coaching hire, not like a, let's say a former player like this football mind who has been in the game forever or even like a coach, you know, who's been like Doug Peterson who has been around, you know, uh, the, who the guy the Jaguars hired. This guy, I believe he was, he went to Yale and stuff and just kind of worked his way up. He's just this great football mind. And, I don't know if you've seen the video, Zach, of um, him calling Tua on the airplane. I did, yeah. That, or, yeah, so just overall. He's had, some, uh, he's had some funny press conferences as well. He's 38. So it'll be interesting yeah. to see if he keeps that. Yeah, he's pretty he's young. young guy. That, that, that's where I'm – yeah, so he was an intern, actually. He came from in 2005 with the Broncos he started. And then he's just kind of worked his way up, basically, you know, with the 49ers, kind of his run game coordinator for – 2017, 2020, and then the offensive coordinator that one lone season in, in San Francisco. And now, boom, he has made it to the top as a head coach. And that's, yeah, like I said, he was at Yale and he studied history there. And he's just kind of been this football mind, you know, his whole life, just kind of going back to what he knows best. And I, I like this hire by the Dolphins. I think that you're getting, they're getting a player's first coach, and that's what you want. I, I think he'll be. Yeah, I think he'll. Definitely help because the offense, kind of like we talked about the Saints, the offense is the weak point of the Dolphins. And they're of. trying, yep. I think, yeah, they're trying to improve that side of the ball. Bringing a young yeah, mind. Some, yeah. Yeah. There's some reports coming out saying that they thought they were really close on the defensive side. So they, they wanted to keep a bunch of like their assistants and their defensive coaches there, which I think they've been doing at least most of them. So it'll be interesting to see how uh, this kind of helps to develop and maybe he takes the next step and kind of makes that pick 
look a little better alongside Joe Burrow and Justin Herbert. For sure. And then also just being like, I think kind of like looking what the Packers did with hiring a young guy like LaFleur, I think that kind of, that might have been something that inspired the Dolphins to really, you know, approach yeah, hiring yeah. a younger candidate as well. Uh, you want to touch on that? And, Go ahead. Yeah, there's, I'm, there's graphic that's been floating around. That's the fourth coach that's been hired off the, uh, I've seen now Washington Commanders, uh, coaching, coaching, uh, uh, coaching team, or whatever from twenty personnel, yeah, yeah. So they had Sean McVay, Matt Lafleur, Kyle Shanahan, and now Mike McDaniel's, and they're all head coaches. And the three of them that I've seen McDaniel's is his first year, but the other three have been fairly successful and. Washington has not been the greatest. Yeah, and touching now on some more IRs here, Doug Peterson to the Jaguars. So that was one. I don't know what you thought of that one, Zach. I I was kind of surprised because with all the reports, you know, we thought they were getting who's the Bron- or the Buccaneers offensive coordinator. Uh, Aaron Leftwich. Yep, we thought Leftwich was yeah. the guy going there, but ended up not being the case, and now. Doug Peterson stepping in, um, and you know he's credited so, with Carson Wentz being that MVP candidate, and then they won a Super Bowl with Nick Foles. So they got a guy with that experience who's been at the top before. So I think that's kind yeah, of what they Super Bowl, need. A Super Bowl winning coach that kind of had a little bit of a downfall, but we've seen happen before where a coach kind of has a tenure where he does pretty good, and then. He kind of goes on a little downfall, takes a year off, and then comes back. And uh, this could possibly be another one. I think it'll definitely help with uh, Trevor Lawrence. It's a better fit than Urban Meyer for sure. I mean, I think we can all agree on that. Yeah, undebatable for that. You want to touch that on the Texans hire here? Lovey Smith? Yep. Uh, the D coordinator for David Coley last year. A season and yeah, this was one. I don't know what you thought of. Um, but he, I, I always, you know, I'm cool. I, I like when teams hire internally, they hire from within. I think that's always something, you know, because it's a guy, you know, in the organization, you were able to see how he performed. I think that's always a good way to go. So I'm happy for Lovey Smith here. Um, and we'll, we'll yeah. see how it goes then for the Texans here because they're in this weird stage right now. You know, Deshaun Watson, what's going on? We don't, we don't know. It's been like that. And I, I don't know, like, just think about a few, just a couple seasons ago, Zach, how this team was put up that big lead over Kansas City. And now look where they are now here. It's kind of a complete 180 for sure. But. Yeah, I think... I don't personally. I think um, David Kelly should have got another season. I I agree. Um, I'm not a big fan of like the one uh, one season coaches, but I mean, I think Lovey Smith is a good hire, like you said, hiring from within, kind of what the Saints did, keeps that uh, continuity within the team. But there's something where they're not going to hire a defensive coordinator, or something like they're not going to hire a coordinator. Because Lovey Smith is gonna like keep he's basically gonna do the head coaching and the coordinator's job. You can I, I don't know if you saw that. You report. can do that. I thought you had to have someone in that position. I'm not sure, but there's like Texan style hire. Yeah, to. yeah, we'll talk about it right here on the spot. So he's calling he will be calling plays. And with that, that means the plan then is to not hire a defensive coordinator. Wow. Okay, so that is going to be an interesting way to go. And yeah. so they they kind of ran that 4-3 throughout last season, and they were 31st in yards as a defense. So, again, the, the numbers don't really speak for, for Smith, yeah. but, again, he's not the one playing out there. It's all about the scheming. They don't have a whole lot of uh... – talent defensively on things, so it's kind of a little bit misleading, yeah. Talk about uh, 
Rick Pisaccia going to the Packers. I mean, um, I'm happy about that. I think, I you think know, we, talk about a hire. Yeah. I think that's one of the better moves you could make. I mean, it's probably the best possible option you could do. If you're the Packers looking for a special teams coordinator, I think, yeah, again, yeah. you got Bisaccia. I think that was. We all kind of thought he should stay in Las Vegas for another year, and they didn't give him the opportunity. So glad he was able to come to Green Bay. And that special teams needs some help for sure. I believe this is now his, is this LaFleur's third or fourth a special teams coordinator already? I think it's his third. So talk about a lot of change right now, you know, with with coaching. That's, that's one for LaFleur's staff, basically. That's been a reoccurring thing to see and, you know, hoping for the Packers to, you know, offseason moves. We're, we're going we're gonna to be talking about it. We'll be following the all offseason long and, with that, Zach, you got anything else to add today? I think that's it. Yeah, so I mentioned the socials already. You know, Jordan Drew, the sports crew everywhere. Of course, on the Instagram, Jordan Drew underscore sports crew. And then the Twitter, at JD Sports Pod. So now going through the scheduling, of course. Cannot forget that, as always. Episode 49 of Jordan Drew, the sports crew is next Monday. And then... We have that EWC Boys and Girls Basketball Breakdown, the February 15th edition. That comes out Tuesday. And then Friday, of course, we got Journey to Million. We'll be back here. Episode 10 already. We're on double digits, finally, of the Journey to a Million. And we'll be doing our Super Bowl recap. So that'll be Zach, myself, Jordan Lorenz, and Jared from Journey to a Million. So we'll have four people on. For an episode to recap the the Super Bowl, and that'll be a lot of fun. But yeah, thank you all for listening to yet another episode of Jordan Drew, the Sports Crew, the perfect podcast for you.